Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Today's video is all about singing and playing at the same time. Is that even possible with the recorder? Uh, well yes, it's very possible and why do we do it? Well, it's because it sounds really good. There are a lot of pieces that use singing and playing at the same time and it's not that hard to learn. It's really worth investing the time into figuring out how to do this. Also, if you play an instrument like the piano or the guitar as well, this video can help you with singing and playing at the same time with that because a lot of the techniques of combining those two different things together are the same. First thing, why would we want to sing and play at the same time? Well, it adds a whole extra sound colour to your instrument. The recorder is very open, it's literally a hole that we just blow into, so of course we can send not only air, but voice. In there as well. You can use it subtly or very extreme. All of this with just the note C. It sounds really cool if you sing slightly higher or slightly lower than the same note because then you get this Also, using a glissando, you could do and of course, everything sounds amazing on a pet sword. And as well as a sound color, of course, you can also add harmony. The recorder is a melodic instrument. It's capable of playing one single melody line, but with the addition of your voice, you immediately form a duet with yourself. There are loads of pieces that utilize this. This is just a small selection. So a bit later on in the video, I'm going to play little bits from these so you can hear it in action. First, let's get into the basics. How do you sing and play into a recorder? Well, firstly, you need to sing. Um, I'm not a singing teacher, so I don't want to give you too many singy, singy tips. What I have read is that you should be using your head voice and not your chest voice. We're going to just warm up here a little bit. Um, what my singing teacher always gets me to do is go and then go up and down. Step one, let's just sing a note that's comfortable for you in your range. So we're going to experiment a bit with closing the lips, closing the nose. What we don't want is this. That means that all the sound is in your nose and that nothing is going to be coming out of your mouth because we're hearing the vocal sound but we also want air to be flowing because that's going to power your recorder. We want this. Step two is that we are going to sing your note again and try and blow onto your hand at the same time to feel that air. It doesn't have to be a lot of air, there just has to be something arriving on your hand because then you know that air is flowing. All right, step three. We are going to sing our note again with the blowing air and you're just gonna bring the recorder to your lips. This step, the smaller the recorder, the easier it is. It's possible that you are hearing this. your voice is being nasal and in your nose. Again, I'm not a singing teacher, so I'm not sure how technically accurate that is, but you want to move your voice down from your nose into your mouth. Let's just try a bit of 
random speak talking singing into the recorder. Do 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 the advantage of this is that you're also getting the tongue involved. Now we have done constant voice with the recorder coming in and out, we're going to do the other way around. You're going to take a comfortable note on your recorder and try and bring the voice in and out. At this stage, the note you're singing doesn't matter. It's just about getting it going. Okay, what are we on? Step five? You'll probably notice that when the voice starts, everything gets louder. That's because you have air and voice, and together they kind of double the sound. So actually what you should be doing is compensating for each. When the voice comes in, the air drops slightly or vice versa. So let's repeat that last exercise, but try and make it as smooth as possible. So now we have the mechanics of singing into your recorder sorted. Now we have something else and that is tuning. Making sure you are singing the right pitches. This can be quite challenging. What my students find difficult is holding the same singing note and changing the fingers for example. The voice automatically wants to go with whatever the recorder is playing. First we're going to do some pitch matching. It does depend a bit what octave you want to sing in. A lot of the recorder pieces that were written for male players, I can imagine the composer was thinking of a voice an octave lower than my voice. To be honest, there's nothing to be done about it. If you've got a very low or very high voice, you've got to sing in the octave that's right for you. First, we're going to pitch match. So I want you to take a note on your recorder that's comfortable for you and try to sing exactly in unison. make it harder by changing the note and trying to follow with your voice. And then a step harder is starting the note and singing with your voice, keeping your voice constant while your fingers play other things. is probably the most important, being able to sing a constant pitch while your fingers are doing something else because that means the two things are independent from one another. Okay and then the last thing we're going to try before tackling this in a piece is singing intervals. Let's see if we can sing a fifth. What we're going to do is play a G, sing with it and then keep your voice on the G while your fingers move to a high D. And then see if you can start and stop this interval that you can hit it in one time. And really get used to the feeling of that sound. And pick a note and try and sing a fifth on top of it. No, that was a third. You can have weeks of fun with this step, trying all different intervals, fifths, fourths, thirds, challenge yourself with seconds or sevenths, anything you like. Just getting used to the feel of those different intervals between your recorder and your voice. But basically none of this is any fun if you're not actually using it in a piece. How do we tackle this in a piece? I think a really nice piece is by the composer Zayna Clark and it's a piece called Gentle Walker for one recorder player using tenor recorder and voice. And it's got quite an independent voice 
and record a line. Let's look at this very first section. You can see that it starts on a unison G and then the two things start to do something different. So that's a really nice point of departure. When we're looking at singing and playing within a piece, you can think of it two ways, horizontally and vertically. Horizontally is each separate line doing its own thing, how it moves from note to note. So in our piece Gentle Walker, the recorder horizontally goes and the voice goes it horizontally it's important that you know both parts really well separately if you don't know if you're coming or going or moving higher or lower it's gonna make it more difficult because what you're doing there is teaching this to your inner ear how you hear things is so important when singing and playing together then we also have vertically and that's how the two parts relate to each other how we have interval, 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 interval. So what we're gonna do now is just take each new interval separately and get used to it, teaching it to our inner ear. And here I'm just going phrase by phrase. I'm not talking about looking at the whole piece in one go. The first one is a unison G. The second one, the recorder has a C and the voice an A. So what we're going to do is play on your recorder the vocal pitch, you're going to match that with your voice and then move your fingers to the recorder pitch. Making sure it's in tune and continuing through the short phrase like this. And the next step is to join two notes up at a time. You're practicing the horizontally and vertically both together. So let's look at the first two. When you're feeling really comfortable, add the next note. And so on until you have the whole phrase. or dissonance. A consonance is an interval that sounds nice and a dissonance is one that sounds not nice. So you at least know what you're aiming for. So that's speaking vertically. Horizontally it's good to know is it just the recorder changing, just the voice changing or both at the same time then you also know where you are. This might all seem like a huge thing to be getting your teeth into, but after you've done a couple of phrases, the process comes so much more quickly.
contemporary music. You can use this in any style of music that you like. It could be really fun to improvise your own bass line for a medieval piece. Or you could even play a Baroque sonata and sing the bass line or play um, a canon and sing in canon with yourself. The possibilities are uh, quite numerous. I'm really curious to hear how you have gotten on. If you have comments or questions, please leave them in the comments below. And keep subscribing to Team Recorder. We're almost at 4,000 subscribers. This is just getting... Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on my small face. And I'm sure a lot of you are very curious as to what this is, so I'm giving a link up here to my video about big bass pet sword recorders. Have a great day and I will see you next week.